Hello guys, my name is Matt Gorman. I'm going to talk to you about um, the world of editing. So as we've seen in the last week and then in the last 14 week, weeks really, we've talked about the relationship between the author and the editor. And um, last week we saw people present and defend the idea that despite the fragility of the relationship, editors are still um, important and play a significant role. So for my research, I decided to delve into the end of the spectrum of when editors take on too much power and they begin to cross the line, as I say. So to set some context for um, this presentation, I'm going to announce that I'm specifically referring to um, scientists and science writing in particular. So let's pretend for the next several minutes that we are all scientists. So as, uh, <laughs> as writers in the humanities, uh, we must now put down our pens, our crayons, our pencils, or any form of writing utensil, and pick up our lab coats. So uh, like most jobs, uh, the end goal is to make money, to, make, to have some sort of living. And for scientists and science writing and researchers, the formula is very simple. You have your experiment plus something equals money. So what is this missing ingredient? Well, this is where we come full circle because the missing ingredient that what, as I mentioned, is in fact writing. Um, but also is attached with this missing ingredient is a who. Um, so just who is this who? That who is you, uh, the editors. So pretend that you spent a few years in the basement of a building working on a lab that you've spent four or five, maybe 17 years researching, um, and your idea is to combine 3D printers with stem cells to create some sort of organic um, regeneration of severed limbs. And you find out after this process that this is in fact possible, and you're like, oh, I can make some real money off of this. So um, you want the world to prosper, but you also need to pay off your bills and your debts over the last several years of researching this. So you put down your beakers and you begin to pick up your pen to write a lab report for publication that you can take this and then give lectures at other uh, halls that will pay you for your, your presentation and then also you would also make money off of this product that you're creating. The problem with this situation is that your writing is less than par, it's less than average. So you have the insertion of the editor. So what I found through my research is that um, there are actual several cases of where editors cross the line of their editing service. Um, so for lab reports and research reports, editors edit, end up editing too much. They try to become authors of the text itself by omitting entire sections of the lab report of the research that's trying to be published and then inserting their own comments, their opinions, their, even their interpretations of the research. And they end up demanding credit after this because, and demanding um, co-authorship of the text, of the document, because of uh, how much they've put into it. So I came upon my exact question that I was asking of um, this. I'll let you read it for a quick second. So this is by this man, George A. Lozano, who is a um, professor at the Estonian Center of Evolution Ecology. Um, so he warns in his article of three aspects that inevitably lead to editors demanding authorship of a text they actually didn't, one, research for, or two, write the entire thing by themselves. Uh, so he warns of the ease of collaboration in the modern age. Uh, that allows for confusion as to who wrote what, so with um, transferring document edits and um, proofs from one person to another, it sort of gets like sort of lost in translation between the idea of who wrote this part, because when people are editing with each other, it's, it becomes confusing. Um, they also, for editing services, offer subject-specific editors who add on their own comments into the research and they just like slide in without the author, the original author, the researcher, noticing it. And he also uh, comments and warns about the general trend towards multi-authored papers, 
Um, so this doesn't even have to deal with editors right now. What it's actually referring to is where you have a group of scientists, a group of researchers writing a paper together. They all become the authors, but then once you decide to try to get it edited, the um, editor <coughs> sees in an easy opportunity to insert their own opinion and be like, oh, well, these people inserted a little comments, I inserted a little comments, they get co-author, I should get co-author. So we're going to talk about the sort of guidelines and criteria for what makes and what allows you to become an author of a text by examining uh, one source that attempts to address or combat this issue in a journal known as Biochemia Medica and its policies. So they outline these four criteria for authorship. The first one being that a person must include <coughs> excuse me, substantial contributions to the concept design and the acquisition of data analysis or interpretation. You also have the drafting and revising of the document for important content, giving final approval of the, of the proof, and finally agreeing to be accountable for uh, basically taking ownership that if something were to be proven false, you would be then discredited for your um, for the writing. So the person who is seeking authorship of this document must meet all four criteria um, in order to claim authorship of the text. And those who do not meet all four, maybe meet three, two, or one, are simply listed as contributors to the text or the document. Um, so as you can see clearly, what what Lozano warns of is truth, it's fact, because um, it doesn't seem that difficult to meet such guidelines because they seem to be so easy to accomplish. Um, so when it what ends up happening is it diminishes the original writer's um, ethos and credibility because they're not the ones who um, wrote all of it, I guess. So I tried to find out how to solve this problem where I came upon, uh, like, like how can scientists excel as the champion of the text, the champion writer of the text, without editors, publishers, and the journal itself having too much restrictions on uh, the paper. So I came across the answer exactly in another quote by a clinical professor of surgery at Harvard Medical School in 2007, where he says and calls for the fact that a good editor should never let a desire for popularity overcome his or her responsibility to the final to be the final sieve between author and reader. And that is my